Hi, this is uh, Michael DeRosa with Coffeeville Community College, and I'm going to show you today how to make a charcoal drawing uh, of traditional space. Uh, we'll save that lecture for some other time. But anyway, uh, we're going to make a realistic drawing from the still life. The still life we're going to be drawing from is from uh, right here, and uh, it's the coffee pot that I'm interested in. That's what I'm going to make my composition about. I'm using paper that's 80, 80 pound paper. Basically how you get the weight of paper, there's 500 sheets to a ream, weigh 500 sheets of paper, however many pounds it weighs. That's what size, or that's what kind of paper you have. So the 500 sheets of this kind of paper weighs 80 pounds. I'm using buying charcoal. And so <clears throat> this is made from a willow tree. They basically like the willow tree on fire, douse, that, uh, douse the limbs in water, and then it produces vine charcoal. So it's a soft, unforg or very forgiving charcoal. And then I have a couple different erasers up here as well. So let's go ahead and get started uh, while I'm uh, doing the video. And so this is how I film it. I don't want to edit my video, so we're going to draw really fast, and I'll be talking the whole time explaining to you what I'm doing and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with baseline structure lines uh, a baseline is the bottom edge of the object so you can see the coffee pot the bottom edge is right here and so uh, the bottom so there's the baseline we're using structure lines I'm going to put the center axis of the coffee pot to the left the center of my composition structure lines are loose non-committed lines the whole time I'm drawing, I'm constantly looking at my subject matter uh, and evaluating what I'm drawing from. Uh, so everything I do is made in response to what I see. What, everything is made in response to what I see. Everything that I draw is meant to be uh, corrected. And so nothing I'm drawing is sacred um, to the point where it's not going to be corrected or it has to be right the very first time. A lot of people get in trouble with drawing, I find being a teacher uh, of drawing, is they uh, try and get everything right the first time. They want to create kind of like a coloring book. And then once they have a coloring book, then they want to uh, just kind of shade it in. And that's not at all what we're doing. We're getting kind of a basic overall structure. Everything's correct. Once I have this established, like the front of the crate is so far down in front of the uh, coffee pot, the back of the crate intersects the coffee pot probably about right here from my angle of view. And so we're just going to say the back of the crate is in here. And then the top of the crate is really probably be about right in here. Uh, I might choose to just leave that out if I find it distracting. So I don't really have to have that. And so now we're going to start to shade uh, the space. Uh, the way I'm going to order my space is called reverse chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro is an Italian word. This means uh, modeling from light to dark. I'm reversing the chiaroscuro, modeling from dark to light. And so the background thing that's going to recede is going to be darker in value. Anything that's coming forward is going to be lighter in value. And so I'm just laying in kind of a ground here of uh, darker values for the background to make this space go back. And so, uh, and so the way it works is your eye can see 32 different values. A human eye can see 32 values. And the, what creates illusion on a flat plane, hands down, is value contrast. So the more values, the more tones you have, then the stronger the sense of the illusion. And so values are key. So there's just kind of the background space being laid in. Uh, 
and there's the inside of my handle. And and so this is all background space right here inside of the crate. And the broader the range of the values and the deeper the sense of space. Now, if I didn't have vine charcoal, I could draw anything that produces values with a viable medium. And so a traditional medium would be charcoal, graphite. Uh, I could use ballpoint pen, pen and ink if I wanted to, which would basically be any ink. I could do ink washes. I could do ink washes with a brush and water, and basically approach the drawing the same way. Um, charcoal is very forgiving, where ink washes are not. So there's my background established. As space has an illusion of coming forward, it's going to uh, get lighter in value, receding. It's going to be darker in value in this case. There's going to be the back of my crate. And any of this is all subject to change, so I'm not approaching it like it's precious by any means. And so it's kind of a it's kind of a cast shadow underneath my coffee pot. Now I'm going to exaggerate the light properties. Uh, that's one thing I always tell my students to do is you, you're not bound to exactly what we see. That's why we study this as a science. This is all a science. It's all measurable. Either your drawing has the information or it doesn't have the information. If your drawing doesn't have the information, then it's not going to work. If it does have the information, it's going to work. So it does not depend upon you. No matter how bad you think you are at drawing, if your drawing has all the light properties, it's going to work, and if it has a full range of values that shape the space, it's going to work. And if it doesn't, it's not going to work. I don't care how good you think you are or how good you think you draw. If your drawing doesn't have that information, it's not going to work. So I'm just getting kind of the contour of that lid defined. And now I see in here, I got some highlights in my can, the coffee pot in here. Um, the shadow is, this is fairly dark and here in my uh, pour spout. Uh, <clears throat> I'll make the side, I'm gonna exaggerate the light properties over here just a little bit. And so this, I want to say, is my shadow side over here. And then as it comes in to the area of light, I want to say the area of light is roughly going to be right through here. And see how the vine charcoal, you can uh, smudge it pretty good. And actually, my area of light is going to be right here. And so a really bright highlight in here. i got several highlights coming in through here, but this is my bright one. And the core of the shadow, which is the darkest part of the shadow, is going to be right in here. And I'm going to greatly exaggerate this in my drawing. And this is going to help my 
my my drawings have there's a higher sense of volume than what I'm actually seeing out there. And so this is the core of the shadow. And then this area will be my reflected light. And then my area of light is going to be over on this side. And I have a highlight in here, but I have to give, so I have to give this side the area of light just a little bit of value. Notice my outside edges. The planes are being defined by value contrast, not a drawn line. And that, and a guy named Masaccio invented that in the early part of the Renaissance. I didn't make this up. This is all a science. And so everything I'm doing, I'm getting out of art history. I didn't make any of this up, or uh, I would be the next Michelangelo probably. And and so there's my top the fine and distinct shape now it's all about correcting so once I get the drawing here it's pretty safe and so that means that I've won the battle it looks like the coffee pot it's proportion my space is starting to shape up nice and now the, the question is is how how realistic do I want to make my drawing how tight do I want to make it and uh, I like my drawings to have expression. If I wanted it to be super tight, I'd just take a photograph of it and be satisfied with that. Because photograph, what it does is it copies or re it records reflected light, light reflecting off the subject. And uh, I want my drawing to be a drawing. And so I like for it to have expression to it. I like for it to have show that it's not exactly realistic or it's not exactly uh, as precise as a photographic process would record. And so uh, the, the, the question is, is how, how much do I adhere to the object or how loose do I leave things or how abstract do I leave things so that it has some type of expression to it. And so I'm responding to, I'm not just shading this in, I'm really responding to the shadows that I see back inside, uh, the, inside the crate, the back part of the crate. And so this is not just... And the more darker tones I put back in here, then that's just going to create more, uh, a greater sense of space in the background.
liking that a lot. Beef up my core shadow a little bit stronger, a lot stronger than what I actually see it out there. And then I did notice that I have some areas in here where this is raised. I'm drawing with an eraser now. That's looking pretty good. And then I have some reflected light there. And this really nice bright highlight right in here. So I'll take away some charcoal so we can really have that. And I reserve the white of the paper for my highlight alone. So nothing else is going to stay the white of the paper except my for my highlight. And then I notice that underneath my shadow, or these raised areas, this shadow, So pretty good. And then now anything extra I do, I won the battle. The coffee pot looks like the coffee pot. And so anything extra I do is just going to beef up the aesthetics. The aesthetics is the beauty of the drawing the underlying structure of the drawing. And so the more tones and the more values I have, then the more beautiful the drawing is going to be. The drawing is a as a subject itself. In 1863, a guy named Edward Manet came along and he asked the question, what is a drawing? Nobody knew how to answer it, so he answered himself. So a drawing is basically a flat surface with shapes, lines, and values on it that add up, or may or may not add up to equal the illusion of the subject. And so when he said that, uh, no one had ever thought about it before, except for him. Everybody thought that a drawing had to be a great illusion of a, of a given subject matter. And when he said that it may or may not add up to equal the illusion of the subject, no one knew how to really respond to that. And so he gave birth to abstraction or ultimately modern art. And so here's the bottom of my crate. There's some folds in here. And I don't want to draw these real detailed by any means, but I just want to suggest the variation 
and the values of underneath the crate. And I notice in my crate that it goes dark to light as it comes forward. That's what has the illusion of coming forward. And so I don't make this the same value here as it is here. Because as values have the illusion of receding, they're going to get darker. As have the illusion of coming forward, they're going to get lighter. Okay, so there's my drawing of the coffee pot. Anything extra I do to it, as long as I do it made on direct observation, it's just going to make it better and better. And it has to adhere to the laws of two-dimensional space. Some little textures that I see in here with the paint starting to peel off, or the enamel starting to peel off. And so that's just extra tones and values for my drawing. This is a blending stick. First time I got it out today. Don't like it so much, so I use the eraser again. Okay, I think we're done with this drawing today. So the last thing we'll do is. I'll straighten this up just a little bit. Put the name on it. There we go. So here's my drawing right here that I made of the coffee pot. Notice as the space has illusion receding, it's darker in value. As the illusion of coming forward, it gets lighter in value. I have about 10 values that make up the whole space. Academically, formally, that's uh, very acceptable. Then here again is the coffee pot that I made the drawing from. And so thank you, and I hope this video helps you make great drawings and look forward to uh, sharing more with you in the future. Thank you.